Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Um, this week's video is another skin related topic. Um, it's a issue that I've currently been dealing with for like, I want to say maybe like two to three months now, maybe even longer because I didn't get diagnosed with it for a long time. Um, but I've done a bunch of videos on my channel about rosacea and a lot of you find it useful. So in this week's video, I'm going to be talking about another issue that I've got. <laughs> Love my life, got so many issues. No, just, just joking. Um, but this is gonna be a video on perioral dermatitis. It's gonna be talking about a bunch of the things I've tried, um, treatments that I've tried that have worked, that have not worked, uh, what my skin used to look like when it was in its like most um, worst flare up, and then what my skin's looking like now. Um, so if this is something that interests you, or if you just wanna get a few tips if you're dealing with perioral dermatitis yourself, then keep watching. <laughs> Do you notice that I do this? Because I got my nails did. <laughs> okay, so first up, um, if you're watching this, you've probably got perioral dermatitis, let's be honest. And you will know that what it is, it is a red rash. It's like a red, bumpy, occasionally dry, and like sometimes it's itchy, rash that goes around your, um, like, it's vile to say it, but like the opening, the open areas in your mouth. So the most common areas you'll get it around your nose here, you'll get it around your like mouth on the sides and then you'll even get it on your eyelids sometimes. Um, it is a awful rash to have because when it's dry, you can't cover it up. Um, if it's itchy, foundation makes it so much worse. Um, and yeah, it's just an all round nightmare. Um, there's no like one reason why you get it, like why you develop it, or there's a bunch of things that it could be, basically. It's really hot, but I can't open the windows. Um, so there's a bunch of things that can cause perioral dermatitis. Um, I feel like the most common thing that a dermatologist would tell you is that it's a breakdown of the skin's barrier, which um, isn't like a new phrase to me because when I, because dealing with rosacea, that's also a breakdown of the skin's barrier. So it's sort of, um, it does make sense to me that perioral dermatitis and rosacea do go hand in hand. Um, but it can also be like triggered or like flared up by a number of different things. So overusing like strong cosmetics. So if you're using like retinols or acids or like vitamins on your face, this can cause your skin barrier to like break down if you're putting too much on it at once which can cause perioral dermatitis. It can also be triggered by like heat and like spicy foods um, and like sun creams, if there's chemicals in your sun creams. It's really, really similar to rosacea because all of those trigger triggers can trigger rosacea as well. So I think it's actually quite common. I've watched a lot, a lot of videos on it now. I think it's actually quite common to get misdiagnosed um, with one or the other. So I'm gonna put a photo up here of what my skin, my, what my perioral dermatitis looked like when it was at its worst point. Um, as you can see, it is on my eyelid. I honestly don't even know how I let it get to this point because the day that I took this was the day that I actually went to the doctors about it and I was like, look, like, look at what is on my face, help me please. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's around my mouth, it's around my nose and on my eyelid. Um, for me, it wasn't itchy, like it wasn't an itchy rash. Um, it was just very red, very, very sore, um, like really sore to touch. Anything being on my skin was just like super, super painful. About three weeks before this photo was taken, I had a tiny, tiny rash. Like it was, it was here, which is where the, it's still stubborn and it's staying but um, it was just below my mouth. It was, honestly, I feel like it was a spot that just like then turned into a rash and just sort of like didn't go. It was tiny, I'm telling you, it was tiny. Um, so I just went to, and this is the worst thing you can do. I just went to Chemist Warehouse, which is like just a pharmacy, um, like my local pharmacy. And I said like, oh look, like I've got a rash, like a tiny rash on my face. Is there anything you can just give me over the counter that will make it better? And the guy was like, yeah, sure. like." Here is this cortisoid, uh, I don't know how to say it, cortisoid, steroid, um, that you can put on it and it'll make it better. And I was like, fabulous. I tried it, went away overnight. And I was like, absolutely amazing, love this. And then I stopped using it and then it came back 
I used it again, went away. That like this little dance went on for like two weeks until I noticed that it actually spread and I was now having to use the cream on my uh, original area, under my nose and my eyelid, which is where basically I've got it now. This is like the massive red flag. If you have a steroid that you've been prescribed for your perioral dermatitis and you're just researching some videos just to see like if they help, do not use it. Throw it away and put it in the bin right now. Because what they don't tell you is that with a steroid, um, if you stop using it, you get steroid withdrawal, which means your issue is gonna be 10 times worse. Your skin quite literally has a withdrawal, like it's like an addiction or something, and it will come back with vengeance. It comes back 10 times worse, which is exactly what mine did. So I went to the doctor. The doctor that I went to, um, prescribed me this. I don't know how to pronounce it. Ideal? Anyway, I'll put the thing here. This is what she prescribed me. Um, she said use it um, twice a day, like once in the morning, once in the evening, and then come back in like a week if it hasn't got any better. So I used this and pretty much overnight, it got a lot better. It didn't disappear, but the redness reduced by like a huge amount. I'll put in a comparison here. Yeah, this is the comparison. So as you can see, it made it a lot less red, um, just like a lot less angry and a lot less aggressive. But unfortunately, like that is it. Like after the first day of using it and seeing those improvements, I didn't get any other results. Better than nothing, but you know, still not the best. Um, when I was prescribed this, I also um, saw on Reddit that a lot of people were recommending in a over-the-counter um an over-the-counter cream that counteracts like the dryness and the itchiness. This is by Avene, um, and this is really, really good. It's like a bluey color. It's a really strange, like it's almost got like a bluey tint. I don't know if you can see that, um, but what this does, it is just really good for any rashes, to be honest. I've, I've done a load of research on it, um, and people have used it on like baby rashes or like nappy rashes um, and they've had a lot of um, They've had a lot of success with it. It says that it is a restorative Protective cream, which is exactly what you want because you want your skin barrier to restore So if you are going to go down the natural side of things, I would definitely definitely recommend this product um, I still use it um, when it's like when my skin is getting a little bit sore to the touch, I'll still put this on 100%. Um, and you know, it's not prescribed. So if you are wanting to avoid that's like prescription creams, 100% I would say recommend getting this. So it was about a week and I realized that I was at a standstill. So I did more of my own research. Um, one thing that I found online that I implemented straight away is that just stop using all of your products. So, um, which was so, so hard for me, honestly, because if you've watched my rosacea videos, you'll know that I swear by like um, my azelaic acid, my um, ni niamicide and zinc, or whatever, um, my retinol A solutions, like they have massively helped, I thought, massively helped like my skin barrier and my rosacea. Um, obviously, maybe I was overdoing it a little bit and this is the whole reason why I got the perioral dermatitis. Um, but so when somebody's saying like, you need to stop using all of that, I was just thinking like, my rosacea is going to get so bad. So I completely cut everything out of my routine. Literally all I used was the Cetaphil um, Gentle Skin Cleanser and that was it. Like and then the prescription um, medications. I didn't use anything else on the rest of my skin. I came across a load of videos that were all talking about Rosex. Rosex. Um, I've actually used this. This is the cream version. I actually also have it in the gel version for the whole of my face for my rosacea. So I used the, um, the gel version and it didn't do anything. And then I came across this video. I'll try and link it below. Um, she was so, so helpful. And she specifically says in the video, you need the Rosax Metro Metronyla Dissolve. Sorry, butchered that pronouncement. But you need it in the cream version. You need it in the cream version because it's not got the right base to work off. It's got all the right active ingredients, but a gel a gel form is going to like dry out your skin. You need it to be in the cream form because you need like 
that moisture, that hydration to restore and build up your barrier again. And this is what her, dermat her, her dermatologist told her. So I was like, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna request it. And this has been very, very helpful. But I will say something, at the same time, and I probably should have staggered it, at the same time of starting this, the Rosex cream version, I also started using this, which mm, it may, none of you may have seen before, because when I first saw it, I was like, I have never even heard of that. Um, what this is, it's called Lion's Leaf. It's 100% natural zinc and Calendula cream. Uh, it's a completely natural product. I found this from a recommendation of a, another video that this girl was suffering with perioral dermatitis. And she said, look, at if you take one thing away from this video, it would be to get this cream because it's amazing for your skin. You do have to order it from England, but it isn't, it isn't expensive. It's very inexpensive. I think it costs like 10 pounds for 30 millimeter, for 30 millimeters. Um, but like you literally, a tiny bit goes like a really, really long way. I've been using this for about three weeks now and I've like practically hardly made a dent in it. <laughs> and now we come to today. <laughs> These two together have helped me. My skin is currently looking like this. Ta-da, I'll try and find a photo. I'll put the one that I took in this morning. Um, so this is what my current routine is. I wake up in the morning, wash my face with Cetaphil cleanser I put the rosacea, I put the Rosax cream on the affected areas. So I put it here, I put it here, I put it under my nose and I put it on my eyelid and just under my eye because it seems to spread there. What's great about this is that it dries pretty quickly. So I give it about like half an hour and then I'll come in with my lion's leaf serum. Now the lion's leaf serum is like, I don't know if you can see, it's like a yellowy colour. Um, it's very, very thick. It spreads very easily. Um, on a lot of the reviews, it said it actually does dry your skin out and people use it as just an individual spot treatment. So if you have a spot, then they'll pop this on there and it will dry it out. Um, I haven't actually found it to be particularly drying because it's very thick, like it's very creamy, but um, it definitely doesn't break me out. So maybe it just doesn't have like many oils in it. But I work from home, I'm in a lot. So I actually apply these like multiple times of day. I probably apply these like this two to three times a day and this two to three times a day, like when I can remember. Um, and it has massively, massively helped. The rash, the original rash on my face here has gone down so, so much. Um, the bit that I struggle with is around my nose because I think that's like the most sensitive area for me. Um, I would really, really recommend you looking into this. The actual description it says on it is to calm, protect and hydrate any skin type in need of TLC. It forms a barrier to protect the skin from moisture damage, which is exactly what you want. Non-prescription guys, these ones are for you. Um, prescription, I would say, say go for the Rosax because I do think that has helped me. Obviously the EDL or whatever one, it um, did help me, but only for like 24 hours and then I re reached like a standstill with it. So a bit of a weird one that I really don't know why it just stopped helping me um, after my first use of it. So yes, that is it. That is all the information I have to give you. I feel like I have absolutely rambled for 20 minutes or so. Um, I really, really hope you found it useful. I hope you've even taken away like one little nugget of information from this whole video. I really hope this video was useful to you. Um, let me know if you suffer from perioral dermatitis and you have any other little tips and tricks because I'd love to try some. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in next week's video. Bye.